Okay, cool. We're recording. So this is the third time because I had no space in my phone, camera, whatever. Hi, welcome back to Leading the Pack Pod. The trade deadline just happened. Let's get into this. So I don't really want to go into talking in depth about each and every deal. I basically want to explain how, because like it, it's going to get tedious just talking about, oh, Taylor Hall, he wasn't traded for a first round pick, but this guy was traded for a first round pick. Duh. It's going to get tedious. It's going to get boring. I really want to talk about stuff like that. I'd much rather talk about the deadline in general, because this was a strange year, I guess you can say. It's been a strange year ever since March of 2020, basically. Sorry, January of 2020. It's just that this is a little bit more of a stranger year compared to years past. I think with this trade deadline, it shows that we've seen a few things. You can see that basically every GM this year is going for guys on one-year deals and that Cal Dubas is right that Rental players are were the most valuable thing this year because if you want, you can re-sign them. If not, they're not against the cap next year because next year is going to be a flat cap. So going into this uh, trade deadline, I already had a feeling that a lot of these players are going to be... <sighs> valued differently than they were in years past and especially with this draft this year there isn't that much uh, value in first round picks compared to years prior like a first round pick can get you a star player before this year the first round pick got you Nick Foligno it got you guys like Anthony Mantha David Savard whatever guys but then also guys like Taylor Hall somehow weren't worth a first round pick now i'll talk about that in a real quick second i just want to talk about like because the leafs made some moves and a lot of people i'm finding aren't completely sure of what the leafs are what the leafs did so what the leafs did is they made uh they what am i gonna say they made a lot of they did a lot of cap finagling, I guess you can say. They weren't sure. No, what am I saying that they weren't sure? They know what their situation with their with their caps with their with their cap situation is. Brendan Pridham, smart guy, he knows what he's doing. He realized that he needed to find some room for money to so they can bring guys in. Luckily, somehow. I don't know if it's because he's actually injured or not or what the situation is. Frederick Anderson goes on LTIR. That's $5 million in cap, uh, cap space right there. They traded in a guy like uh, Riley Nash. He goes on a long-term injury reserve. I will, you know, just for people who don't, excuse me, don't know what LTIR means. Riley Nash comes on, goes on to long-term or comes in. They trade him for a seventh-round pick. Now they traded for him. Riley Nash, when they traded for him, he got injured. Like, he's out for four to six weeks. He's not going to be back until the playoffs. Now, you might be thinking, why would they trade for a guy that's going to be out until the playoffs? Why would they trade a pick, especially, like a seventh-round pick? They traded a seventh-round pick for him. You might be thinking that, but at the end of the day, he's making about $2.5 million. Frederick Anderson, $5 million. Because they're both injured, they're going on LTIR, long-term injury reserve. They're going to be out until the playoffs. That is seven million, seven and a half million dollars of basically free cap space. Now, for those who don't understand what LTIR is, I'll do a quick, I'll dumb it down because it's very, it's complicated still. It's a lot more complicated than how I'm going to explain it. This is just basically from what I know. From what L, what from what I know, LTIR is. Anybody that's going to be out for a long period of time, they're technically not on the books, but also at the same time on the books of the salary cap. You're still paying them, of course. They're just not... It's not that they're not going against the cap. It's just that your salary your salary cap ceiling gets pushed up. 
So for a guy like Frederick Anderson, because he's going to be out for who I think, if I'm not mistaken, he's going to be out until the playoffs. Because of that, the 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 cap situ- the 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 Maple Leafs cap ceiling goes from eighty two and a half million dollars to eighty seven and a half million dollars, and then you bring in a guy like uh, Riley not Riley Nash instead of them being up against the cap at eighty five eighty two and a half million dollars. You combine the two salaries, seven and a half million dollars, eighty-two and a half. That is ninety million dollars more, or that is ninety million dollars their cap ceiling. It's weird how it is. I always thought of it that they're not on; they're technically not going up against the cap. Tech, they still go up against the cap. It's just the cap ceiling is raised for guys that are on LTIR. Very confusing. I highly understand that. That's just how it is. So guys like Brendan Pridham. Kyle Dubas, they're smart with this stuff. Brendan Pridham is a numbers guy. He knows what he's doing. He brought in guy, he brought in Riley Nash, or they brought in a guy like Riley Nash because he not only can be useful in the playoffs, sure. When he played a, when he was on the Bruins, he was the first line center when Bergeron when Bergeron was injured. And he played really well. And what against the Leafs, he like he played really well against the Leafs in there in the 2018 series. For those people who don't know, that was the third. It was the third matchup of the Leafs and the Bruins. Uh, so, Riley Nash played well for the Bruins when he was on the Bruins against the Leafs. And they bring him in. He's somebody that you can put in the lineup on on the fourth line when the playoffs come. If you need to stick him in on the, if you need to stick him in on the team when the time comes, you can always stick him in. That's basically what it is. He's not really going to be somebody that is going to be... You're a world beater. Like you trade, you traded a seventh round pick for him. Don't expect much for uh, much coming from if he does play. Like if he is, is able to get into the lineup around playoff time, don't expect him to play. I don't really expect him to be playing. He's going to be out for forty six weeks, so I don't expect him at all to be playing during the 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 regular season. And then we have the trade with the Nick. Like oh, they have the what's his name, Nick Foligno trade. He's going to be coming out to the team, and there's a. Again, more cap finagling with, uh, with Nick Foligno. He is technically traded to San Jose before he's traded to the Leafs. He goes to San Jose. Columbus retains 50% of his salary. San Jose retains 25% of his salary. So 50% of what's remaining from, after, from his salary after Columbus retains 50%. And then... Basically, what the Leafs are doing is they're only paying 25% of their salary. So, again, how the numbers work, because this is weird. Columbus is paying 50% of Nick Foligno's salary. San Jose is paying 25%, and the Leafs are paying 25%. So, Leafs are basically paying him pennies. He's going up against... He's against the cap. They're paying him pennies. So, that's basically how it's working for the Leafs with Nick Foligno. That's sort of why they had to trade a first-round pick for him because of the salary retained. But also, he's a valuable asset. And I'm, I think the Leafs... Like, I'm, I'm completely fine with the Leafs trading away that first-round pick for Nick Foligno because this isn't too much of a valuable draft this year. And I'm going to talk about the draft in a second, like in a bit. But until then, I'm going to... I got some other things we're going to be talking about. But like I said, it's not that much of a valuable draft. You're not going to be getting guys like Connor McDavid in this draft, for sure. Like, you're not going to be seeing another Connor McDavid for a little while, but you're not going to be seeing guys like Patrick Lina. You won't be seeing guys like Austin Matthews. There isn't, a, like, a consensus number one overall pick in this year's NHL draft. That's why I'm completely fine with them trading away this first-round pick. Because there aren't this, this draft isn't for certain. Last year, at least it was Alexi Lafreniere as the consensus first overall pick. And the consensus second overall pick, or it wasn't so much a consensus, it didn't, like a lot of uh, players was debating whether it was going to be Tim Stutzel or Tim Stutzel or uh, um, Quinton Byfield. But still, you knew who the first overall pick was. You don't know who the first overall pick this year is. That's why Buffalo tanking this year, sucking this year, I'm going to say, because I don't think this is a tank. Buffalo's sucking this year. Wrong time for them to suck. To get the first to try and get the first round uh, the first overall pick. Now, we're going to be uh seeing or we saw a lot of first round picks get traded away this year. 
like I said, the GMs just don't really value value this draft, and I don't blame them. Like last last or yesterday when I was watching the uh, TSN trade uh, trade center trade deadline, like where I was switching back and forth between TSN and sports, and TSN was talking about the consensus, like the first round pick, like they were doing a what's it called now? They were doing a draft. Oh my god. What am I trying to say? They did a draft ranking for prospects. They were naming these prospects, and these aren't really guys that I know of. Like, these aren't guys that I'm hearing of right now. I get it that, sure, they're, the leagues, it's screwed up because of, like, COVID and whatever. But the lead, like, the NCAA was still going on for a bit. The CW, the CWHL, the CHL is still playing games right now. Just, they did cancel the Memorial Cup that was announced today on Tuesday. But every time, like if I go on to CHL news, I, all I see is Connor Better, Shane Wright, those guys. I turn on the NC, like NCAA guys, they don't really get that same coverage in Canada, but still, we knew who Jack Eichel was. We knew who Quinn Hughes was, who Jack Hughes was in the uh, develop, developmental programs. These aren't really big names coming into this draft. The biggest name is Luke Hughes. And that's because his brothers are still in the, are both in the NHL. He's the younger brother to Jack and Quinn. It's just not that big of a, it's not that good of a draft this year. So I'm not too concerned with them trading away this first overall pick. The Leafs in 2019 drafted Nick Robertson. That as much as you may think that you need that first round pick to get a good player. Jack Hughes and what's his and Capo Calco, you don't really hear about them. Like you hear about them, but compared to some other guys that were drafted after them, they still have a long ways to go, I guess you can say. I don't want, I'm not saying that they're bust, whatever, but just because you don't have the first overall pick doesn't mean you're not gonna get the best player in the draft. Like you can get the best player in the draft in any part in any pick. It doesn't matter. The Leafs got Nick Robertson with the second round pick. Yeah, sure, they haven't really developed any like a lot of people say they haven't developed anybody out of the top four, but that's just not the case. Timothy Lilligren is looking like a very good defenseman, and he was drafted seventh. He's looking like he could be a, a an NHL defenseman by next year, I guess you can say. He is his defensive abilities have gotten a lot better. If you if you watch, you don't even have to watch the Marlies. Just there's a lot of great Marlies writers talking about players that I think they should get the respect that they deserve. Like a lot of these Marley writers, Timothy Lilligren, second seventeenth overall, he can be a pretty good player in the NHL. Rasmus Sandin, 29th overall, he can be a very good defenseman in the NHL. I have. I still highly believe in him. Who else? Uh, Pavel Datsuk is a great example. He was drafted in, in the ninth round. Just because you're not a first a first round pick doesn't mean you're not going to be a great player. And this year, it's really going to be magic beans because you can be you can get anybody in the in the draft anywhere. And I think because a lot of these guys are going to be going under the radar. The way this draft works can work is every is there's gonna be a lot of studs in the later rounds or there's gonna be no one at all. That's just how I see this draft. That's why I'm not too concerned about trading away draft picks away this year. It's whatever to me. Now, the Taylor Hall thing because I don't want to stay on the the Maple Leafs thing or like the the draft whatever yet because I basically talked about it now. But the Taylor Hall th- situation. If I'm Buffalo. I feel like I'm kicking myself in the ass. And if I'm Taylor Hall, I'm kicking myself in the ass. You are Taylor, like Buffalo and Taylor Hall. You look at each other. You're like, this is a match made in heaven. If it works, you can re-sign Taylor Hall. Like if you play, if you're playing well, if you make the playoffs, you re-sign Taylor Hall. Great. You have a great winger for Jack Eichel. If it doesn't work, you're putting yourself in a huge hole. And I think Buffalo dug themselves in a huge hole with this Taylor Hall situation. 
Taylor Hall signs for one year, $8 million. It's not a bad contract. It's a pretty good contract to sign him because like they did at the deadline, you could trade him if you're not playing too well and if he's not playing too well. He just wasn't playing too well. He scored two goals in like 37 games for them. He couldn't click with Jack Eichel. Now, I heard some people say that, oh, it's because Jack Eichel's like this. It's not like that. It's not Jack Eichel is not a good teammate. He's a good teammate. He's a captain for a reason. You don't just make somebody a captain just because. He is a captain for a reason. He is your star player. He's a good playmaker. He's got speed. He's got a fantastic shot. They just couldn't put it together. Now, I don't know if it was because of the coaching or not. You give them a better coach. You give them a better system. Yeah, maybe it can work. But the Buffalo system just wasn't working for Taylor Hall. They traded him to to Boston. But the thing is, the haul that they got for Taylor Hall is nothing compared to the haul that a lot of teams got for other players that aren't Taylor Hall. (coughs) I hate talking like this. Columbus got a first-round pick for Nick Foligno. Now, part of it was because the Leafs were only paying him 25% of his salary. And that Columbus is paying for a twenty or fifty percent of the salary, and then, but then, the Red Wings trade for, or trade Anthony Matha to Washington. Washington was uh, Was Washington gave up two roster players, one of them being Jacob Vrana, a very talented winger, who has been on the team for a little while, a Stanley Cup champion. He is a great player he just hasn't really clicked he just hasn't really been feeling it in washington this year i guess that's why they traded him away but still a very talented winger in jacob Vrana, a first round pick richard ponick who can help you to play next year and i think this is either the last year of his deal or the second last year of his deal no this isn't the last year this is either second or third year of his deal so going into next year, if I'm not mistaken, they either have him for one or two years. Somebody can move at the trade deadline. A second round and a second round pick. Meanwhile, Boston had to give up Anders Bjork and a second round pick for Taylor Hall and Curtis Lazar. If I'm Buffalo, I'm kicking myself in the ass for that. Like the how you're like you really screwed up. You all you had to do was pump and dump K- Taylor Hall. Easy first round pick at the very least. You only gave up a second round pick. This was money in the bank and you screwed it up. How many guys would have loved to trade you their first round pick for Taylor Hall? (coughs) Tell me. But no, he only scored two goals in 37 games. He stunk. He just wasn't playing well. And I guess you can sort of see where this track was going because... Ever since his heart-winning season, he wasn't the same player. He was getting injured. Then he was injured for two seasons. Then New Jersey trades him to Arizona. He goes to Arizona. Kind of stinks over there. He wasn't... Not that he stinks. He just wasn't that good. Arizona barely even makes the playoffs. The only reason why Arizona makes the playoffs is because of the qualifying rounds. Go to the qualifying rounds, get knocked out in the first round. Then you go to, then he goes to Buffalo on a one-year deal, two goals, thirty-seven games. He put up a pathetic season. Can he put it together in Bo- in Boston? Maybe. I think he can because of the system is gonna be is gonna benefit him. It's a better system. He's gonna have better players around them on the first on. Excuse me, not on the first line, but on like the power play, whatever. But. On 5-on-5, five five, he's going to be playing with David Krejci. Now, if he couldn't put it together with Jack Eichel, on 5-on-5, five five, I think his numbers aren't going to be looking too good. Because if he couldn't put it together with Jack Eichel and, Bu- and Buffalo, I don't know. How we- I don't expect him to be playing too much better with David Krejci. Now, it's not that David Krejci is a bad player. It's just that he's not Jack Eichel. That's my reasoning for that. But other than that, I think... Kudos to Boston for getting a, a former first overall pick. Uh, I guess the Taylor versus Tyler debate is over because Taylor Hall is now on. Bo- uh, it was now drafted first overall by Edmonton, and then traded to Boston. So I guess 
that's how it works. And then after this is also after Tyler Sagan was traded to Dallas for nothing, basically. It's just funny that Boston traded Tyler Sagan to Dallas for nothing and then got uh, Taylor Hall for nothing. I still think that Boston got the better player in the in the draft, but what are you going to do? That's that's the Taylor Hall situation. It's a weird situation how you weren't able to get a first round pick for him, but Columbus comes out with the fir- with two first round picks, one of them being from Nick Foligno, which like I said, they retained 50% of his salary. But then they traded away David Savard to Tampa and got a first round pick for him. Now they also I think retained salary for him as well because there was another team involved, but they got a first round pick for David Savard. And it's just I, I I can't I can't get over how I think that Buffalo just really fumbled the bag with Nick with no with Buffalo that Buffalo fumbled the bag with Taylor Hall. It was a this could have been such a good situation. This is the worst case scenario. Now, I'm not saying that Anders Bjork is a bad player. This is somebody that he was a former first or a first round pick. I think he was taken like 15th. He was that draft year where Boston had the 14th, 15th, and 16th pick. <coughs> and he was one of those picks. I think he was pick number 15. I can't remember. Ow. If I'm not mistaken, he was the pick before Matt Barzell. But it was that year where they had three picks in a row and picked. Bjork, uh, Seneshin, and then Jacob DeBrusque. Now, Bjork also did play with Taylor. Uh, sorry, Bjork in the past has played with Jake, uh, Jack Eichel. I think it was with the World Juniors and the U.S. National Team Development Program, uh, the U.S. Defe- Development Program, but they have played together. They're familiar together, but Anders Bjork isn't Taylor Hall. So if it didn't work, but who knows? On this Bjork can put it together, a pretty good career with them. They had that chemistry together, but I don't really see it panning out as well than it, you know, it should have been with Taylor Hall. It can be better than with like Bjork can be better on Bo- on Buffalo than Taylor Hall was because you just have to score three goals and you're better than how Taylor Hall was. But it's a it's a shit situation that bu- that Buffalo created. What are you going to do? I don't really feel bad for Taylor Hall. He decided to to sign with Buffalo. He could have signed with Colorado. Go for that Stanley Cup, whatever. And then, whatever. Like, you choose your... You make your... You sign with... You could have signed with Colorado. Colorado has been looking at Taylor Hall for so long. You could have gone back to Edmonton to play with McDavid. You could have gone here. You could have gone there. You choose to go with Buffalo. I think even... If I'm not mistaken, even Vegas was looking at Taylor Hall, which they look at everybody. They haven't really developed their own players. They just keep on trading for team stars players, but what are you going to do? That's Vegas. That's how they work. But I think that's it for this week. Like I said, it wasn't that big of a trade deadline. Like It wasn't that, you know, not that it wasn't fun. It was a little flat. I didn't really expect much from this trade deadline because of the flat cap. So it would it wasn't gonna be a huge deadline. There were gonna be blockbuster moves. There was only one with the well, they call it the blockbuster move, but really what was there it was Anthony Mantha going to Washington in exchange for four players or four uh, for four things. But that's about it. I think that's gonna be it for this week. Uh you can follow me on Instagram at Bonavoda. You can follow the podcast at Leading the Pack Pod. Follow my Insta. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Bonavoda underscore. You can check this out on YouTube and on Spotify, Google Podcasts. Still no Apple. Don't know what's going on there. I don't know what how how the hell to get that going. So I'm gonna have to talk to some people. But that's about it. I hope y'all stay safe. Get ready for the playoffs. And just remember, Montreal isn't as good as you think they are. Bye.